So, moving on. I want to quickly mention this because I saw these two articles courtesy of the BBC regarding sobriety and I've had other conversations with people and I was kind of briefly talking about it in this other sort of like, you know, um, London techno group that I'm a part of and whatnot. And a lot of it is kind of triggering for me because for me, um, it's kind of triggering because I feel like a lot of it kind of centers around like lifestyle shaming, which I've kind of got in like subtle really under under underhand kind of ways where people are basically you know will say stuff like oh my god you're still doing that you're still going to those sort of things in a kind of weird backhanded compliment sort of you know condescending type of way where they're essentially questioning your lifestyle choices and making it seem like because they're over it and which a lot of my friends are are over partying and over going to raves and i've clearly got a passion for it which is the reason why you know i'm i'm I'm, i want to have my own club in the future um it's clearly something i'm kind of wanting to pursue especially being a dj also but a lot of my friends have sort of moved on and they've kind of decided to do other things of course the pandemic sort of like sped that up i feel like i think a lot of people either double down on their drinking and drug taking or the pandemic made them decide hey i want to start a family hey i want a career move hey i want to move to another country or i just want a lifestyle change overall and people decided to kind of shed away their old self and when the pandemic was over things kind of returned back to normal and they didn't want to go back to going in the pub every day because to be fair to people as well the kind of drinking culture here in the uk was getting a bit crazy before the pandemic it was a bit excessive like especially places i used to work in i worked in social media i worked in marketing especially for startups and whatnot and that whole scene centered around you know drinks on a friday um stand you know drinks on a friday for team meetings drinks on a friday for company meetings um drinks during the week with your team members and colleagues and whatnot especially you know most of the places i worked in startups in london were in places like in old street and liverpool street where I kind of they're sort of referred to like our version of Silicon Valley so a lot of those places are where all the cool bars and restaurants are so because of where you are at work you just happen to be where all the cool cocktail bars are so you kind of end up going there um, especially if you've had a stressful day or just just any excuse to go there so the drinking became really really crazy with people and some companies I worked for they had a bar there'd be places like you know we work and stuff offices that would have flipping um pop, basically um uh, what you call it uh, they'd have beer on tap that you could basically buy and some places it could be free so it got a bit crazy so the pandemic maybe kind of helped but i saw this clip that i thought was really cool and i thought this is really interesting because i feel like this is a the best kind of way to kind of go about it and this is courtesy of a clip taken from bbc and it features the manager of sidemen which is a youtube channel and collective um that's obviously really popular here in the uk and popular obviously all over the place a notable member being ksi and the manager of this is really young i think he's at 24 or something killing it in this in the industry doing great things but he basically said like you know cutting out alcohol basically allowed him to succeed and kind of get to new heights in his career which is basically you know evident but let's um play the clip and you can hear what he has to say here Having been working at companies like Bison Lab Bible, I was caught up in ultimately that party culture, which is so a part of those businesses. And I knew that I needed to stop in order to truly get ahead. So now that I don't drink, us at RK Media are very aware that others might not also want to drink. And we always want to make the culture inclusive of everyone, no matter what their enjoyment habits are in their social life. For example, if we have Friday beers and pizza, we'll always have a range of soft drinks on offer. Or if we have a company away day, there will never be drinking as an expectation. We'll have coffees, teas, and any other soft drink that people might want. And not everything is hosted in a pub. Not to say that not drinking alcohol is somehow better than drinking. You can definitely find a happy medium, and that is ultimately a great position if, if you can do that. I think my generation, Gen Z, has a very different view to alcohol. Alcohol is much more about you as an individual and how you want to enjoy it, rather than a culture setting the trend and saying that you need to drink in order to be a part of something. So I do like that. And I, I do like the fact that career-wise, I think that's very important to say in that how important it is to basically have some level of balance 
or to maybe abstain from the drinking alcohol, especially if you want to progress in your career. There's no doubt about it. Because for this guy to be 24 and to be the manager of Sidemen and doing what he does and basically, you know, living a pretty decent lifestyle, earning quite a bit of money, especially here in London, and just, you know, just generally having a cool job that a lot of kids his age would want, you kind of have to assume that you'd have to put the party into one side because you can't be doing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night drinks and also smashing it at work. It just doesn't kind of go hand in hand. And I do like the fact that this new generation now have become cognitive of the idea of kind of separating work and kind of play whereas i feel like my generation it was sort of like all the same like he speaks about places like vice and lad bible i remember the early iterations of vice when it was kind of what, what you call it when terry Richardson was still kind of taking pictures from there there would be vice parties here in london where they i think most metropolitan cities had that i'm sure i'm sure you new york had it but i'm sure i remember london vice parties were insane there'll be times that you'll be in these parties sponsored by jaegermaster sponsored by red stripe sponsored by um i don't know anyone else liquor company out there alcohol company and you'd be standing there thinking how the hell are they paying for this like especially back in the day vice used to have a collaboration or long-term partnership but i think with ibm or one of those computer companies and they'd be having crazy parties where essentially they had an open bar the entire night and if you know anything about those trendy hipstery type of events usually open bars would be like a time thing so it'd be to kind of get people in there to make sure you kind of get a crowd you'd say open bar from like six to seven but then after that people have to pay so you'd have to get people in to kind of get the free drinks so you take all the pictures but vice parties would be open bar the entire time of the flipping event whether it was an event for an exhibition whether it was some sort of book release a panel discussion there'd be drinks available on tap so if that was if that was if that was what they were doing for parties i can only imagine what it was like for the people working in the office it must have been crazy and office culture again in the uk was really really rough really really crazy before the pandemic because like he's mentioned a lot of our especially in the uk a lot of our social events and time to spend with friends was obviously in bars and pubs a lot of our pubs have really cool or have really good food maybe visiting chefs maybe pop-ups start there like you know various pop-ups like you know pizza pilgrims that's now become a, a nationwide sort of like pizza chain started off being like a street thing and then kind of developed into basically you know being its own legit restaurants but it obviously had pop-ups in in flipping pubs uh meat liquor which is a big one also uh, has now become nationwide started in pubs so the pub and food culture kind of goes hand in hand but it's very difficult to be in a pub with everyone drinking and just eat you know you kind of want to have a drink as well and at work especially when you work with your colleagues especially if you're working nine to five nine to six you're there all day you're stressed out you want to release and you want to hang out with your friends and when you talk about non-work stuff you go out for a drink and it was kind of a hand in hand thing that kind of went and it got a bit nuts especially in my like i said industry of working in startups where most of our offices were located in areas where there was a high concentration of bars and pubs and cocktail faces and nightclubs and whatnot it's just gonna get a bit crazy and a bit excessive so I thought the pandemic came like at an oddly weird time and a perfect time to kind of uh, put the pause on everybody and kind of make people kind of take stock and decide to kind of change up. And I do like the fact that in this office for Arcadia, I think Arcadia Media, whoever manages the sidemen, that they have an option where you can have kind of like, you know, soft drinks. They have like a fridge full of soft drinks that you can kind of take. So, because I remember back in the days when we used to work, when we used to kind of go to office now, I kind of mostly work from home in the places that I've had jobs at. Most of the time, the, the kind of the soft drinks would be an afterthought either there'd be like a fridge full of, of beers that you know companies send you as promotion or you'd buy or someone would go and buy them at a local tesco or sainsbury's but they usually forget to get soft drinks so then you're kind of put in a position where you're kind of only catering for the alcoholics because everyone wants the beers and the alcohol to be free because you know you don't want to pay for it of course so that kind of got a big setter so just having this as an option kind of allows people even if they did want to have a drink it gives you an option to not to have one you know it's kind of gives you good sort of um option so you're not really being um silly in that regard but there is a part of me that also thinks that a lot of this sort of like sobriety talk is turning way too much into like a keto thing when keto was really popular and people are getting a little bit crazy with it and kind of turning it into their whole identity whereas i feel like in general there just needs to be more balance I think that's what people just lack in general. I think I speak for myself and I speak for people that live in the Western world because I, you know, I've been to places like Spain, 
Italy, no, it was Spain, France, and places like that, right? Where a lot of people drink, but they drink in moderation. And I feel like in the UK specifically, we have a real big issue with drinking in moderation. We have a real big issue with doing drugs in moderation. Everything is to an excess. And I feel like in, in UK specifically, we have people that operate on the extremes. Either they're completely sober or they're completely, you know, functioning alcoholics, drug addicts and stuff. And I feel like there should be a happy medium. As I, as I see when I go to places like Berlin, I see all these people who essentially go out and get messed up from Saturday all the way till Monday. And then Monday morning, they get to go to work like nothing happened and just kind of wipe the slate clean and go on again with life. But I feel like with us, the party always kind of rolls on every day. Like, you know, there's many people that I've heard who have kind of been working and doing drugs and whatnot during the week or drinking during the week. It kind of gets a bit excessive and a bit crazy. So people just always need to kind of go down the sobriety route because they don't see any other option where they could go to a bar and order one drink and be cool. It always has to turn into 17. Whereas I feel like a lot of people could could kind of learn or kind of try at their best if they could possible to try and kind of operate in a world where you can have some level of balance and whatnot. But of course, the Gen Z kids, for some reason, have the ability to do it. And I think like the whole Gen Z not drinking thing, I think is a bit overblown. Because when I go out, I do see a lot of Gen Z kids. And I feel like they're probably the first generation who I feel like have introduced, which is something that happens a lot in Berlin or other places like in Europe, like Spain and Italy and France, where a lot of people sometimes go out, especially for parties, and they just drink a soft drink and they maybe do drugs. But they just have a soft drink and don't drink any alcohol. Where I feel like here in the UK, alcohol and drugs are kind of go hand in hand. Whereas this newer generation... I feel like are coming up and have kind of made it cool to go out and just not have any alcohol or pre-drink before and they get from home and not buy more. So you're not coming out of the club, you know, absolutely wasted and just do some gear at the club or just not do anything. So that obviously is happening. But I feel like the whole the whole Gen Z thing, our sober thing is a little bit overblown, in my opinion, a little bit overblown. But there's a really cool article regarding it anyway. Curse of the baby, curse of the BBC, curse of the BBC that speaks on it. I'm going to quickly read it now. This is Curse of the BBC. It's called Work Life. Get it up on you on the screen. Obviously, you can see some cool looking Gen Z kids here on the cover image. It says a complex combination of outside pressures, information overload is driving young people to snub alcohol far more than generations before them. So let's read this article. As a teenager, Lola's drinking went in cycles. There was a night um, heavy drinking, then a regretful day spent piercing together. So piecing together the previous evenings together. Next, a period of sobriety before the next big night out. But when this pandemic hit, Lola moved back with her parents in London and her drinking came to an abrupt halt. Um, lockdown, she says, presented her with an opportunity to step back. Now 22 years old student, 22. Jesus Christ, imagine that, man. That's cool. Is enjoying a different relationship with alcohol. She re recently tried clubbing sober and although she still drinks, it's much... <laughs> I love that sentence. This sounds like a very Burt Crasher sentence, right? A different relationship with alcohol. She's still going to the club. Although Richie tried the club in sober, I did drink. It's like, because I've, I've said it many times. Anybody that lies to you and tries to tell you, oh my God, clubbing sober is so illuminating. It's eye-opening. It can change your life liar they're lying they're lying they're lying i go to a lot of clubs i've been to a lot of places i've also been there sober let me tell you and i and i can have fun i can have my own fun i can be my own party it's boring and crap and annoying going to club sober it can be done but it's in my opinion especially if you've been introduced to clubbing the other way it's it doesn't it pales in comparison because sure it can be done but let's not try and act like it's a better option because it definitely isn't it continues here it says, um, I'm not anti-drinking, says Lola. Um, I just don't like getting drunk or feeling ill the next morning. I feel like I like going home safely and remembering people I met. Sober nights work well for me. This is definitely something that I can kind of relate to, but I feel like this is very much an uh, example of why, of, and more of an example, more of a consequence of like drinking too much. Because if you drink, you know, to get a buzz and to chill, you can go back home and have and not have a crazy hangover the next day. It's only when you go excessive, you start mixing your stuff, you start doing loads of drugs, that suddenly it becomes crazy and it extends to a two, three day hangover. Because now I know if I go out, usually it can turn into a two and a half day hangover, which is absolutely brutal, especially if you want to get stuff done. It can make you feel horrible about yourself and all this sort of malarkey. But I feel like if you drink in moderation, you can you can have the ability to limit the effects of the flipping, um, you know, hangover. And of course, if you listen to people like Dr. Huberman, he's got loads of different tips that you can use, magnesium tablets, every drink that you have helps drink your loads of water. There's stuff that you can do to limit this, to minimize it. But, you know, it is what it is. 
Lola isn't an anomaly among her friends. She says all have been drinking less than the pandemic and she feels no judgment from her peers when she's not drinking. Friends who haven't limited their drinking as much as me think it's cool when people go out and sober. It's a you do you mentality where people are respectful of your choices, whether you're protecting your mental health or just don't fancy it. And I feel like that's the main difference with this generation coming up, the Gen Zs. I feel like my generation was very much peer pressure like i said before like my first dalliance unfortunately with dude mdma was when i got spiked by a friend because they they, they thought i'd enjoy it and which i obviously did but still i got spiked right i got burt kreischer when i first had mdma and you know in general when you go out there'd always be somebody saying hey do you want to bump do you want to line do you want to have a bit of this do you want to have a bit of that do you want to be a bit of this do you want to be a bit of that always people offering and when you people offer you those type of things and you're a broke kid with not much money it can be hard to kind of turn it down. So you kind of end up doing stuff that you don't actually want to do just because people are offering it. Now, it's not pressure, but they're just offering it. And sometimes you feel pressure, but just the offering alone can maybe make you try it. And then suddenly now your whole entire night has completely changed from what you were going to do before. So I definitely understand in that regard. It continues. Experimenting with alcohol and drinking to an excess has long been the scene uh, as a rite of passage in, into adulthood, at least in Western, Western cultures. From an early age, often before the legal age, alcohol is embraced as a societal lubricant, a way to have fun, make friends and escape the day-to-day -day realities. Few professionals or social environments are without the form of alcohol. alcohol sorry. But Gen Zers are taking it slow as they enter adulthood either by not drinking at all or drinking less often in less quantities than older generations. The UK's largest recent study of drinking behaviours showed in 2019, 16 to 25 year olds were the most likely to go teetotal. That's incredible, man. That's really cool to see that there's a whole bunch of like 16 to 25 year old kids that just don't care about booze, that are just chill. They don't care about drugs. Like that's pretty awesome, honestly. Um, we're most likely to be teetotal with 26% not drinking compared to the most likely generation of 55 to 74 year olds. 50% of them didn't drink. Among US adults, um, the Gallup showed um, those ages between 35 and 54 were most likely to drink alcohol with 70% compared to Gen Z as a 60%, boomers 52%. While a study from 2022 found that the portion of the college age Americans who were teetotal has risen from 20% to 28 um, in a decade. Of those who drank the large portion of the young Europeans defined as over the age of legal um, drinking up to age 39, drinks once per month, 27%, while in US, the biggest group drank once a week which is 25 percent and i'm, I'm kind of lucky in that regard because i've always said like my kind of sh very strict christian upbringing which i really hated when i was younger because i wasn't allowed to go out certain places or i had people asking me questions where i'm going well it's, it just kind of got annoying but one thing that i can really say that i was really happy that my parents did was keeping me in church for that long because my first drink of alcohol must have been like in my early 20s i must have been like 24 three 24 maybe even which is crazy to think of that when i had my actual first beer which is nuts but i also think because i wait because it had to wait so long it was very difficult for me to kind of build up um it's kind of difficult for me to kind of suddenly become addicted to it and then because i had it so late it also kind of became lame to be addicted to it you know because i had loads of fun before without booze I knew I had to have fun, but without it, it didn't really exist. And then when I'm going to clubs now, I don't need it to kind of get hyped and stuff where I can still kind of have it if I want to, but I don't need it as a kind of thing. And also, because I've never had any drinks at home, it wasn't necessarily the drink to go to for, you know, some people have always have a drink with dinner. Like I remember listening, talking to some dude on the train um, and I was, we were talking out loud to my friend about, oh, you know, I remember listening to a podcast and somebody on the podcast said they got through like 12 bottles of beer, sorry, 12 bottles of red wine per week. And I was in my, in, in on a train talking aloud, thinking, how am I, how can you get through 12 bottles of red wine a week? I was like, this is crazy. But then I remember the this guy on the train just bumped into our conversation and he said, hey, I'm a, basically, you know, I'm in recovery. And he said that I could get through that easily, but it's not that much if you think about it, because if you actually like to drink alcohol, you can have that one bottle and finish a bottle per day. And if you're working from home, it's even more crazy, especially if you have a partner because you're drinking while you're making food, you're drinking while you're, while you're eating a food, you're drinking after. So I was very fortunate in that my house that I grew up in, um, there was never booze and we never drank and drinking alcohol was never like the drink of choice with a meal. It was always water, um, some sort of fizzy drink or soft drink, but there was never any booze. So the idea of me always having a, 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 
uh, you know, some alcohol with a meal didn't really, it didn't really kind of click until later on. And by then again, I couldn't really develop a, a kind of addiction to it. So I'm very fortunate in that regard because there are other parts of my life where, you know, it could have gone left. It continues. Um, the decline in youth drinking, according to experts, is remarkable um, and widespread in the most high income US, so European countries, as well as the US, Australia, New Zealand. During lockdown, Gen Z Australians were most likely to be decreased their alcohol consumption with 44 reporting that they're drinking less, which is a big deal because Australians like to get it in when it comes to booze. The Australians are very much like UK people when it comes to drinking. More than double the rate of any generation. Rates of binge drinking among New Zealand's young people also dropped by more than half between 20, 20, 20, 2001 and 2012. It continues. Pinning the downturn on one particular driver, however, is impossible. Um, Gen Zers are growing up in a unique social landscape where, weighed down by financial and societal worries, they're more risk averse. They have a nuanced understanding of how drinking impacts their mental health and that people around them. Um, consequently, a youth culture that has denormalized drinking is flourishing and a change is being felt. As Gen Z reshapes the idea of a good night out, often societal is, often socializes without drinking and trade the hospitality industry from a uh, uh, move. Sorry, uh, the trade and the hospitality industry are moving at a fast pace. I've seen this myself because I see a lot of Gen Z kids that go out nowadays, especially in the clubs I go to, who are more worried about their outfits and how they look than they are about getting messed up in the clubs. And I remember for me, when I used to go to nightclubs, it was like an escape. It was a place to kind of go, to kind of go get crazy. And kids nowadays, I feel like, are going to clubs to express themselves. So they're basically what you describe as club kids. They go in there to get taken pictures of. They go in there to connect to other people who like the same scene, same music, same scene. You see that happening in places like Unfold, and Fold, that happening all the time every Sunday and whatnot. But it's kind of popping up as a thing. Or even places like, um, what's the thing? Like Guttering, they do the similar sort of vibe. A lot of people going out just to show off their outfits, just to show off, you know, certain makeup, a hairstyle, connect with different people that are kind of into the same sort of thing. You know, build, link and build, link and build, as opposed to going there to categorically get messed up, which is what we used to do back in the day. Including and risk averse, part of the reason for the kind of drinking and Gen Z's appear to be the more cautious than older generations, both in terms of health and how their peers perceive them. It says here, quote, the decrease in alcohol consumption is certainly not happening because of alcohol policy, uh, because all risky practices are going down, drug use, unprotected access, risky behaviors like smoking, crime and driving hazardly. Young people are more risk adverse in general, says Amy Pine, a senior research fellow at the Center of Alcohol Policy Research, La Trobe University, Melbourne. A factor in the shift is young people today know more far more about health risk, which is true because the access to information is crazy now um, compared to before. Um, with more available research, open discussion, and their knowledge is increasingly multifaceted. Um, said She says, it's easier than ever to learn more about the perils of drinking, whether that's by a quick Google search, tapping into TikTok communities like Sober Talk, or talking with friends and family members. For example, concerns about losing control and developing a drinking addiction is markedly heightened among young people. Google research in 2019 has showed um, 20 by 41% of Gen Z has associated alcohol with vulnerability, anxiety, and even abuse. Wow. Oh, interesting. Um, while gen, while sixty percent of UK Gen Zers associate drinking with loss of control, um, almost double those who don't. The spate of drinking spiking in clubs and bars may also prevent um, serve as a deterrent, especially for women. Yeah, for sure. When that whole spiking thing was happening, I saw a lot of Gen Z kids basically saying they're never going to clubs ever again. So they're kind of getting scared away from clubs. They're kind of becoming, or they're very health conscious, which is definitely cool to see. But I just like the fact that there's a whole bunch of like 16 to 25 year olds that are not flipping, putting drinking and alcohol on a pedestal. And they're just kind of vibing and being them and being young and also not kind of limiting or you know hurting their developing brain and their bodies with all this sort of nonsense and toxins they're putting in there they're being clean they're being vegan they, you know they're sticking away from all these you know seed oils they're not drinking booze they wreck you know they, they're doing all that cool stuff which is nice because you're going to get really healthy grandparents in the future which is nice plus with young persons every move and uh, being potentially played out in real time social media or friends for friends and family and even employers letting loose come is loaded with risk. According to the same Google research, 49% of Gen Z say their online image is always at the back of their mind when they go out socializing and drinking. It's no wonder that 70% of, 70, sorry, 76, 76, 76, percent and feel it's important to be in control of aspects of their life at all times that's hilarious that they say that because that's a complete contrast or the complete opposite of what i was saying earlier about my tumblr right my tumblr from like 2017 that sort of era was just loaded with pictures and images of me drinking let me let me get it up again here and just and just show you 
because I feel like this is a, definitely a big change in what we're seeing these kids do and definitely shows that they are probably way smarter than my generation in general and just smarter than all generations because they're able to kind of you know load up these kind of risks and be able to make the right decision so this is a this is my old tumblr from back in the day right the last post I made on this tumblr was July 27th 2017 and the first image you see in there is a picture of me holding a bottle of red wine in what looks like a forest rave. So this must be sometime on Sunday afternoon. I must have been out already 25 plus hours and I'm already holding a bottle of red wine here, drinking in a forest, listening to techno music with a bunch of other, you know, crackheads out there, right? Absolutely crazy. And if you scroll down my entire Tumblr, everything includes alcohol. This is a Travis Scott event, alcohol, some sort of house party somewhere. This picture that's blurry, alcohol, me holding booze, um, random people that I don't know, alcohol, me on a bus with a joint in my mouth, probably boozed up food probably the day after recovering a bottle of whiskey like everything has to do with booze like this a picture of me at flipping primavera festival with a friend like everything kind of is centered even food is centered around flipping booze that we used to do back in the day absolute crazy look at it another picture again with me holding a bibbing bottle so it's quite cool to see that the kids nowadays are not really are kind of protective and scared about being portrayed like back in the day this to me was look was cool like to show people that you're drinking look like you're being cool and you had a personality and you were doing interesting things when now really a kid from gen z would have never been spotted you know see with a picture of them holding a bottle because it just looks too crazy people are going to think you're too cracked out which is why people are starting to do the whole lifestyle shaming thing so it's quite cool to see the change kind of happening in real time with all these kind of kids at the same time so i'm not going to not going to lie so anyway go back to the article here um it says here john holmes professor of alcohol policy at the university of sheffield as that there's also been a stock attitudinal shift not only to then as have a deeper awareness um of the health risk what else does have here um, but they also actively shun the notion of drunkenness which are absolutely 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 love i um, in the mind of late 2000s getting drunk and binge drinking was a way of friendships and formed um the solidified even um experiencing the negative effects together was a key part of making sustaining friends in, in adolescence early childhood but gen zers are more likely to see drunkenness as unpleasant uncool interesting i love that let's read that quote once again because i feel that's like fucking really poignant it says here in the mind to late 2000s Sorry, in the mid late 2000s, getting drunk and binge drinking was a way friendships were formed and solidified. Even experiencing the negative effects together was a key part of making and sustaining friends in adolescence and early adulthood. But Gen Zers are more likely to see drunkenness as unpleasant, uncool, and uninteresting. How amazing is that, man? That's absolutely amazing. Big up the Gen Zers for seeing drinkers as being uncool, but also don't make it your whole entire personality. <clears throat> sorry sorry my fucking throat's going crazy here yeah don't make it your whole entire personality have more to you than just not drinking and also if you don't drink and you don't into it there's no need to kind of constantly announce it i think just leading by an example having your lifestyle being the way your lifestyle is and not using it like a badge of honor is a much better way to go about things because i feel like the whole lifestyle shaming the whole putting it as a badge the whole i'm better than you type of thing is really lame and i feel like kind of goes against why you probably currently are probably not drinking in the first place but again what do i know what do i know um what you just what you're saying in the chat is better to get blasted early in life and get it out of your way so you don't end up like bapa in your early 40s. No, of course, of course. Um, I feel like, but it's different though because I feel like I've met a lot of people, especially in the UK. I've met a lot of people, especially who come from smaller towns, smaller towns where it's really boring. They don't have, you know, a lot of stuff to do for young people. A lot of those guys and girls uh, suffer a lot from you know drug abuse and alcohol abuse because they don't have anything to do so they drink really early and they start to do drugs really early and then they turn into you know druggies and alcoholics you know late in life also but a lot of those guys also have a thing where what uche is saying where if you're from a small town and you started to you know you did your first line when you're like 15 most more, more than likely by the time you hit your late 20s you're kind of over it because you can you know that first high you can never get it back again you're kind of tracing a dragon but you kind of got it out of your system. You're not that bothered about raving or drinking or doing that anything anymore. So it's kind of it can go kind of both ways in general. But I think in, it's just nice to see that sobriety is now like a normal thing. It's not like a thing where I know a lot of people growing up 
where they used to dread birthdays. Like I had some friends that'd be like, oh my God, man, it's what, what at the time? I don't know, between like June and September, they used to hate it because that would usually be the times where people are inviting you to barbecues, they're inviting you to birthdays, engagements, baby showers, and there'd always be a pressure to drink. And sometimes people would be, you know, especially in the UK, there's always like, oh, do you want, do you want a drink? Especially if someone's ordering around and people are like, come on, just have one, have one, have one. So if you were trying to be sensible, those social evenings were really stressful and it would kind of give you loads of anxiety and loads of stress and just kind of piss you off because you were put in a position where you kind of were shamed into drinking even though you didn't want to so people would kind of avoid those places and just not go so the whole working from home helped things to so people settle down and people just generally just accept that hey you can go out have a flipping ginger beer and be and also be having fun with your friends you don't need to also kind of get into the booze and stuff which i feel like is absolutely incredible so big up damn gen z is coming up for absolutely changing the game and making it cool to be lame making it cool to be lame because lame is actually the coolest thing ever but also don't wear it like your identity, you know, have some sort of me, me personally, I'd much prefer to have like balance than to be like either or, but hey, just maybe that's me.